Good that? afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Dear colleagues, we are glad to welcome you at the conference ICON Mastered 2022, the 14th International Conference on Mathematics, Science and Technology Education. My name is Olga Bilazir. I am a moderator. Pavlona Ciparenko and Olga Bandarenko are organizers. ICON Mastered is a peer-reviewed international conference covering researches in mathematics, science, and education, as well as advanced learning, including mixed learning, e-learning, ICT-based assessment, mobile learning, and more. We are starting the work of our session, Biology and Biology Education, Chemistry and Chemistry Education, Integrated Science Education, which will last from 2 p.m. till 5 p.m. During the conference, you can ask questions and after the report or write it in the chat. Let's start. The first report is presented by Maxim Kvitko. The title of the report is Proteolytic Process in Organism of Different Age Rats Exposed to Xenoestrogens. So you're welcome. The first presenter. Зараз, секундочку, вибачте. Sorry, one minute, Давайте я, може, виведу демонстрацію. So, colleagues, uh, sorry for technical problems. Що, знову відсутній? Давайте я виведу зараз на екран. Ну, спробуйте. У мене справа в тому, що звук є. Тобто я, я не можу зрозуміти, в чому. Вибачте, можна права демонстрації екрану надати? 
бо в мене, здається, прав таких немає. Зараз. Є. Dear conference participants, let me present a report to you. Proteolytic processes in organisms of different age rates exposed to senoestrogens. The destruction of the endocrine system by chemicals, which are a group of compounds that negatively affect the endocrine system, is an organ problem of day. Such substance are often found in everyday products and are epidemiologically associated with several diseases. Currently, the endocrine system by chemicals date bank contains 1000 molecules, including pesticides, natural and industrial products, cosmetics, medicine and food additives, and other low molecular weight senobiotics. The environmental estrogenous can be categorized in the group on these slides. Next slide. The Endocrine Society declares that endocrine disrupting chemicals are an exogenous chemical or mixture of chemicals and in the statement of principles. They interfere with any aspect of action of hormone and as an exogenous agent. Once can be connected with the production, release, transport, metabolism, binding, action or elementation of natural hormones in the body. EDC are responsible for the maintenance of homeostasis and the regulation of development processes. Next slide, please. Chemical bonds of senoestrogenes with plasma carrier protein have significantly lower affinity. In natural estrogens, this affinity is much better, so they are more easily accessible to target organs. Next slide, please. H and Estrogeny surroundings affected the difference in effects. A process is known as developmental reprogramming can permanently reprogram normal physiological responses under the influence of changing environmental conditions. Such changes in physiological responses increase the body's susceptibility to diseases later in life. Next slide, please. The aim of study was determination of the effect of senestra genes on the proteolytic processes in different age rate. Next slide, please. Materials and methods. The experiments were conducted on Western rates exposed to exogenous estrogen for 45 days. At the beginning of the 
experiment free month old pubertal animals group 2 and 6 month old sexual mature rats group 4 were involved the control group consisted of intact appropriate each animals group 1 and 3 next slide please results and discussion cysteine catapsins are important regulators and signaling molecules of many biological processes some of these processes being listen below next slide please the enzymes are involved in the development of a number of um, pathological conditions for example Catapsins, which mechanically supports to show specific carcinogenicity of the like substance, caused the invasion of tumor cells through the basement membrane. The activity of systems catapsin L was reduced by 15% in the lower of pubertal families when compared with control and 10% at the sexual nature individuals of group 4. Catapsin B was activated by 13% respectively. Next slide please. Table 1 Proteolytic indices of different age families rate exposed to elementary extragenes. Next slide, please. Table 1, part 2. Next slide, please. Proteolytic inhibitors perform important physiological functions. Delay the premature activation of proteolytic enzymes, protect proteolytic tissue from microbial enzymes, regulate the state of the coagulation system and fibrinolysis, affect arterial pressure and vascular permeability apoptosis processes. Next slide please. Exposure of the drug sinistrol in the brain of the rate in the pubertal period has been shown to activate catapsin B by 10% compared with the control group of the same age. In the sexual mature females, the activity of the enzyme in the experimental group is reduced by 8%. Next slide, please. Widespread expose of estrogens has led to the need for studies of biochemical changes in the kidneys. According to the results of studies of shifts in the proteolytic system, it has been found that trypsin activity increased by almost 40% in the kidneys of pubertal females and 8% in adult individuals. No significant Difference were found for the alpha 1 AT index between group 3 and 4. For group 2, the growing was 8%. A similar trend of change is characteristic from 
alpha 2 in G, the activation was 5% and 17% respectively. Next slide, please. During the exposure of the sinistral drug in the red brain, both subjects underwent catapsin L activation 7% group 2 and 30% group 4. Next slide, please. Endogenous intoxication is a clinical syndrome that arises in various pathology, pathological conditions due to the accumulation in tissue and biological fluid of the body of the metabolic destructive cell and tissue structures, destroyed protein molecules accompanied by functional and morphological lesions of organs and body system. Next slide, please. The imbalance in the proteolytic system leads to excessive formation of the peptides with toxic properties. It has been shown their accumulations in the organs of rates of both experimental groups. Next slide, please. In summary, the eating food contaminated by exposed genes led to changes in the proteolytic system and the development of endogenous intoxication. Next slide. Conclusions. Thus, the elementary exposition of rates that genes leads to changes in the proteolytic system and the development of endogenous intoxication, which are organ-specific and age-dependent animals. The control difference of sign in an organism provides various influence on the following types of interaction, namely a cell and cell, cell and extracellular matrix. In addition, soluble factors can be a trigger for disruption of information transmission by signaling pathways. We believe that the identified phenomena may lead to the suppression of one of the main mechanisms of removal of damaged cells from the popular named apoptosis. The information obtained can be a paradigm from the risk assessment and prevention of diseases, the etiology of which is the elementary intake of senestra genes. Thank you for your Thank you for your report. Colleagues, are there any questions? У мене є запитання. Шановний пане Максиме, узагальніть, будь ласка, одним реченням буквально практичне значення вашого дослідження. So please say at least in one sentence the practical meaning of your research. Будь ласка, можна я, як теж соавтор цієї роботи, можна я відповім на це питання? Практичне значення цього, будь ласка, так, Олена Анатольна Лихалат, практичне значення цієї роботи в тому, що ми на тупер одним реченням живемо на дні такого океану ксеноекстрогенів, тому що вони присутні навколо нас 
кругом. Це і їжа, перш за все, тому що стимулятори росту, на жаль, використовуються дуже-дуже часто. Це і молоко, і м'ясо, це яйця, це продукти сої, тут природні естрогени, але вони теж мають кумулятивні властивості. Крім того, це косметика, ті ж дезодоранти, шампуні, то, що ми користуємося. Це пет, пляшки, якими ми користуємося, це мінеральна вода і все інше, соки теж. Це все естрогени, а, мають властивості, естрогені властивості, оцих дестроїд ендокрін систем, які руйнують нашу ендокринну систему. А, це, а, крім того, навіть дитячому харчуванні це теж знайдено. Чому? Тому що це з пестициди, інсептициди, це теж естрогенні речовини. Це кадні а, магнези, тобто важкі метали, які виділяються, ну кадні, звичайно, це транспорт. Тобто ми живемо, ось нас оточують оці естрогени. Вони навколо. Чому виникла ця проблема? Тому що в Україні на тепер величезне, про це не говорять, але величезний, скажімо так, сплеск захворювання на рак молочної залози. І то величезна проблема. Я розмовляла з колегами-медиками, вони кажуть, то проблема з проблем. Чому так? Чому так? Тому що ось все наше оточення – це естрогени. От таке практичне значення роботи. Попередня робота була присвячена вивченню впливу цих Речовин на оксидативні процеси, протолітичні процеси теж надзвичайно важливі в організмі, тому ми визначилися а, з нашою роботою. А чому діти? Тому що це безперечно група ризику, і чим раніше наші діти підпадають цей вплив, тим більше ризик в подальшому мати таку етеологію щодо захворюваності. Дякую. Як це завідно? Дозволу, але не Анатолівни дозволити. Чи я можу транслювати? Сорі. Дозволу. 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 Доброго дня, шановні учасники конференції. Дозвольте, з дозволу Олени Анатолійовни, хотів додати, що велике значення таке ж має потрапляння цих естрогенів з побутовим сміттям до екологічного середовища. І побутове харчове сміття, воно попадає до сточних вод і потім накопичується в ґрунтових водах, стікає в наші центральні майстри, ну, водоймища і також може потрапляти в організм. Так що вивчення цього питання дуже актуально в будь-якому регіоні і воно для України в цілому. Дякую. So I will add, so exogenes, it is very important to know the information about them because uh, they can be in our food dust and uh, then of course uh, they can come into our body. So, and we continue. Next report is presented by Ina Grot. And the title of the report is A Computer Simulation of Population Reproduction Rate on the basis of their mathematical methods. You're welcome, Ina. Hello to everybody. I'm happy to greet all the participants of Icon Masters International Conference. And uh, I'm happy also to introduce my uh, core speakers, Lyudmila Belousava and uh, Natalia Svetlana Litvinova. My name is Lyudmila Grozun. I am a professor of Simon Kuznets, Kharkiv National University of Economics. The topic of our presentation today is practice of applying a functional approach to the design of digital learning aids. Uh, the importance of the research is caused by the uh, some core Uh, 
four factors. Among them, there is need for the uh, digital learning aids of new generation, which is increased by the urgent needs of content, contemporary education. The design of nowadays digital aids should be provided on the base of the progressive approaches, which are relevant to the realization of prospective educational paradigms. Also, the process of preparing of Preserve a specialist today for successful work in the contemporary world. Current needs for modification on the new level. And uh, definitely, the situation with vocational training is exaggerated nowadays by the ex unexpected circumstances co caused by the global pandemic, war situation, uh, and urgency of development new forms of teaching and learning. Uh, uh, thus, uh, the current challenges cause uh, upgrading the model of the uh, specialist training based on new paradigms. And one of such paradigms might be holistic educational approach. The central idea of holistic education is cohesive development of the whole personality based on the strong links between personal experience and real life problems. Uh, uh, upgraded model of this uh, specialist training uh, based on holistic approach implements holistic approach in the complex of aspects. First of all, it should be based on concentration and generalization of educational content, uh, on the representation of the educational context directed on the stimulating of cognitive processes and uh, natural merging of students' educational practice. Dear colleagues, the technology of integrated learn has become leader at high education institutes of Ukraine. Today, STEAM education is the most promising method of training specialists in certain fields because the integration of certain disciplines into a single education system has proved to be extremely effective. Given the dynamic development of EST and variety of methodological approaches, method of using computer modeling system to create projects for various research tasks and teaching young people. Such issues require additional research. Refinements, approaches, models, developments, new implementation methods. In our report, we will demonstrate the possibility of interdisciplinary integration of learning content through the theoretical justification of the technology of studying mathematical models of population reproduction using computer mathematical system and programming languages. The integration of educational components takes place in several areas and to the different levels of higher education. The our study, we use internal disciplinary integration, which is out to the process of preparing the student for the first bachelor's levels of higher education. It involves a fragmentary process carried out of the levels of each discipline and involves the search of interaction of different elements within the educational components and new approaches for the information of students' ability to integrate computer modeling and mathematical models. The introduction of interdisciplinary integrate learning of the educational process involved us to that task. First, to trace the possibility of interdisciplinary integration of learning content. Second, to study the practice of using software environments in the process of modeling biological problems based on mathematical models. Thirdly, to investigate the integration of algorithms of mathematical models in the process of computer modeling. The following theoretical and experimental research methods were used to solve the task analysis of scientists educational and methodological literature. Search for modeling method, analysis of applied mathematical package and programming environment. 
to implement the creative models, method of mathematical modeling, time series analysis, regression analysis, method of algorithmization and programming values, analysis of the obtained result in according with the research problem experiment, citizen searching and forming, with the subsequent statistical processing of the result. The integration process proposed by user were carried out with the use of collaborative learning technology, namely in involving the interaction of participants in the educational process, students of bachelor's degree in chemical, biological, physical, mathematical and engineering pedagogical faculty of TNPU, which involved them to develop skills work together in a small group and ensure quality educational outcomes. The material for the study was the collection of red fistula started by students of the faculty of Math chemistry and biology during an internship in zoology in 2070-2090. In total, students collect more than 1,000 specimens of species. Partnership between unaggregated of the first years of study of chemical, biological, physical, mathematical and engineer pedagogical faculty began in 2020 at the stage of elaboration to the collect material. The process of interdisciplinary integration of learning content was carried out by a through of the application of a number of mathematical models to the study of ecological system using computer mathematical system and programming environment, based on which it was possible to conduct specialized research. Work began on modeling the dynamic of biomass fluctuation and productive of the great snail population, Helix formation, which has been consumed for centuries by residents of a number of European countries. The next step was to use the ARIMA model to predict the number of individual biological population. Equally interesting was the study relative to the forecast of individual population development in the Fevus model. We are extremely interested in the research in the field of mathematical modeling of Behirova, which has related on the application of the Leslie matrix model of ecological system. The object of the study was the dynamic of the population of red wool. The study is based on experiment date obtained during 2017-2019. The software implementation of the computer model for predict the number of population dynamic was carried out by us on the basis of the Leslie model. The graphical user interface of the creative application can be seen in this slide. Any modeling process goes through several stages, observation of the object of modeling, accumulation of facts, phenomena, conductive experiments, meaningful statement of the problem, schematization, formalization of facts, phenomena, certification, formulation of the technical task for model development, conceptual formulation of the modeling problem, Mathematical formulation of the problem, checking the correctness of the model, consequence within the mathematical model, quality analysis of the model, selection and development of method of solving or solution to the problem by analytical and numerical method, verification of the adequacy of the model to reality, verification of the model. Practical use of the built model. Mathematical modeling, in the case of properly constructive model, help to see what is difficult or possible to verify in experiment. Allowed to reproduce such process. The observation of which in 
natural wood require a lot of effort and time. In mathematical models, you can lose different options to establish various connections, combine individual factors, simplify or complicate the structure of the system, change the sequences and strange of influence on it. All this makes it possible to better understand the mechanisms that operate in natural condition. The expediency of using the proposed method of justify by the following factors. Students' comparative analysis of mathematical method, making decision of the possibility and limitation of using a particular method. Implementation of joint activities for modeling and develop of software application. Methyl testing. Beggaring in create of software product. Analysis and result. The orientation of the education process on the development productive integration approach has several positive aspects. The effectiveness of formation of student skills is modeling. The effectiveness of training in comparisons with the subject of professional orientation, which form the algorithmic competency of students. Through the possibility of interdisciplinary integration in the process of joint activities. Our research and our own experiments suggest that this level of interest in, in performing such research among students is growing and contribute to the development of future professional competency. We see the prospect of further research in the study of the possibility of software implementation of algorithms for describing the state of population within a certain geographical area of Ukraine. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your report. Are there any questions? You're welcome. The authors, uh, how you ever check it? Uh, uh, how uh, of uh, some uh, your models? Uh, correspond to the reality. Thank you. Звичайно, що ми з тим разом з викладачами педагогічного факультету, педагогічного факультету, це кафедра зоології і ботаніки, і всі дані, які ми закладаємо, то що модель. Ми беремо в них, якщо ми працюємо з такому біологічному практики, які не гідні на територіях, вони оце збирають інформацію. Ми використовуємо і ці моделі, чи відповідають результатам моделі кількості тих слимаків, які є на певній території, і модель Аріма, коли ми досліджували ці комахозаполювальні кома. Так от, оця модель експоненціального росту дала потік по 12%, але біологи виявилися задоволені, вони кажуть, що це дуже непогано. А модель Аріма дала 8,5% потік, бо це вже для них дуже добре. Ну от, такий ось результат роботи. Ну, фактично, для них це, для біологів це дуже важливо, а для нас, математиків, у нас рівень зацікавленості в тому, щоб ця модель працювала, щоб надавала результат і щоб вона використовувалася. Дякую. І якщо вони працювали разом 
biological practice um, and they presented the results of the models that are responsible in the correspondence of results and together with math and biology it's very important. So we continue. And uh, the third report is represented by Vira Zupanets. The title of the report is Awareness and Knowledge of Primary School Students on Productive Health. You're welcome. conference, uh, dear colleagues. My name is Veda Zupanets and uh, I'm an associate professor in the field of teaching methods uh, of biology and ecology and faculty of sciences at University of Novi Sad uh, in the Republic uh, of Serbia. Uh, it is my pleasure um, to present uh, the most important results uh, of the paper entitled Awareness uh, and the Knowledge of Primary School Students on Reproductive Health uh, on behalf uh, of the co-author team of professors and researchers from Faculty of Science, University of Novi Sad. Uh, the internationally uh, accepted definition uh, of reproductive health uh, includes uh, the areas of sexual health reproductive freedom and uh, access to information, methods uh, and services of reproductive health and safe motherhood, which uh, includes uh, safe pregnancy and the birth uh, of healthy children. <clears throat> the main factors influencing uh, the increase in sexually transmitted infect infections and uh, underage pregnancies uh, in transition countries are pure information of young people about it, a low awareness of the need uh, to maintain uh, reproductive health, a uh, lack of knowledge uh, about safe sexual intercourse, and the spread of uh, prostitution. Uh, the sources uh, from which young people get information about reproductive health are different. They are family, school, media, pairs. Uh, although uh, many studies related to adolescence awareness of the topics uh, emphasize uh, the role of parents, so they still do not always have an adequate, uh, adequate uh, approach to explain exert certain, certain problems of the, uh, on the topic of reproductive health or do not have adequate uh, uh, education uh, to convey such information to their children. Therefore, uh, the school stands out uh, as another important source of information on reproductive health. The subject uh, of this paper is to examine uh, the information and attitudes of adolescents, 7th and 8th grade elementary school students in the Republic of Serbia on sexuality and uh, reproductive health uh, and uh, to consider the need for the introduction of this type of education for students of this age. The aim of this paper is to assess the level of information and knowledge of students in the final grades of primary school on reproductive health and sexuality. The research sample includes 207 students. Observing the sample according to the gender of the respondents, the research included 111 girls and 96 boys. The next few slides show uh, the results of the research. They showed that about 60% of respondents did not uh, have a boyfriend or, or girlfriend, 87% of them uh, did not have sexual intercourse, and 11% did not state whether um, they had sexual intercourse. Examining the influence of the family on the behavior of adolescents, uh, it was concluded that uh, most students uh, have parental control over their associating. About 74% of respondents' parents personally know with whom their children date or socialize. 21% of respondents' parents have heard about their friends but do not know them personally. And, uh, in as many as 6% uh, of respondents' parents have no information with whom their children associate and or 
go out. In agreement uh, with the parents, more than half uh, of the respondents determined the duration of the associating, and uh, for as many as 34% uh, of the respondents, uh, the restriction either does not exist at all uh, or sometimes, sometimes exists. In the absence of parental control, uh, adolescents uh, become prone to deviant or risky behaviors, uh, primarily driven by curiosity, a desire to explore and prove. Examination uh, of adolescents' knowledge and information about reproductive health and uh, sexuality showed that uh, about two-thirds of respondents do not know uh, that a girl who is menstruating can remain pregnant, uh, which indicates the fact that adolescents do not have enough knowledge in the field of reproductive health and sexuality. It is interesting to note uh, that more male students do not know uh, the answer to this question. When asked when is, uh, when is uh, the right time to have sex, about 35% of uh, Respondents answered uh, when you feel ready. 31% uh, uh, of respondents stated at age um, 18 for health reasons. Uh, about 15% when you know your partner well. 12% uh, when you are sure in mutual love. And 8% uh, after talking in counseling and learning about possible dangers and consequences. Examining uh, the reasons for having sex uh, came to the conclusion uh, that uh, there are three main reasons for it. These are curiosity, uh, uh, physical attraction, and uh, love for a partner. Other answers have a representation of less than 10%. The results of the survey showed uh, that over 80 a percent of students uh, cited curiosity as the main reason, to, uh, reason for having sex. This is certainly a big problem because students uh, do not have enough knowledge of biology and uh, similar subjects on reproductive health. The second and only answer of, of eighth grade students is physical attraction. This means that love for a partner, maintain, maintaining a relationship, physical attraction, etc., are not important for them as relevant categories that affect their choice of partner for sexual intercourse. Through the survey, uh, we further found out uh, who is the person with whom young people have the easiest way to talk about their sexual life. The results indicate that uh, students find it easiest to talk about sex life with pairs. 40%, parents 38%, and older siblings uh, 17%. The survey students stated uh, that the easiest way to talk about sexual life is in the first place with a friend, then uh, with parents, and only at the end uh, with an older brother or sister. A very small number of students stated that they had a conversation on that topic with a teacher or a partner. This shows uh, that students need to know more about their sexuality, but uh, they don't uh, want it to be their partner because they lose self-confidence. Self and for that reason, they turn to their peers or parents. As a method of protection, against uh, unwanted pregnancy, uh, the respondents uh, most often mentioned condoms and contraceptive pills. A small number of respondents have not heard of any method uh, of protection against unwanted pregnancy. Based uh, on students' answers to this question, their awareness of contraceptives is present to a large extent, but it is necessary to get to know them uh, in more detail during additional education of students. By examining students' uh, knowledge of facts about sexually transmitted diseases, uh, alarm data on ins insufficient knowledge of this topic were obtained. Namely, about 90% uh, of students do not, uh, do not know about uh, herpes uh, and syphilis. About 80% do not know about gonorrhea. Um, 
96% do, uh, do not uh, know about chlamydia and uh, hepatitis. Most students have only heard of AIDS. Most of the respondents are informed about the problem of abortion and uh, have the knowledge that it can endanger health and cause permanent sterility. The fact uh, that almost uh, uh, one third of the respondents are not aware of the possible consequences uh, of abortion on health uh, at their age uh, represents a potential danger uh, that may happen to them. And uh, this slide presents uh, the most common topics, uh, dilemmas and issues uh, from the sphere of sexual life that seventh and uh, eighth grade students would like to discuss during the realization of lectures, forums, workshops, or conferences. Those are, uh, when is the right time to have sex? Uh, what should be done before the first sexual intercourse? What should be done if an uh, unwanted pregnancy occurs, termination of pregnancy and possible consequences? What diseases are sexually transmitted? Uh, the students also stated the uh, specific questions that, that uh, they want answered, while about half of them st uh, stated that uh, they are interested in everything uh, in the field of sexual life. This data clearly indicates uh, that young people are aware that they lack basic uh, or key information about sexuality uh, at this age and uh, that they want to know it. Students' uh, answers to these questions are, uh, to this question are important uh, for the further implementation and organization of sexuality uh, education. The following conclusions can be drawn uh, from this research. Parents and peers are not trained enough to talk about sexuality with their children in a professional way, uh, so school is perhaps the only real source of professional information on this topic. About uh, two-thirds of respondents stated that uh, they acquired little or no knowledge about sexuality at school. The fact uh, that mm, the main reasons reason uh, for entering uh, into sexual relations is curiosity additionally confirms uh, the importance of, uh, of introducing a new subject in the basics uh, of school, uh, whose main goal would be a more detailed education of young adolescents uh, about sexuality and reproductive health. For this reason, the authors um, propose to introduce the subject of health education which uh, would be taken in all upper grades of primary school from fifth grade to eighth grade and during secondary school. In this way, uh, students uh, would be continuously educated about reproductive health uh, and other health problems about all possible consequences of risky sexual behavior, but also the prevention of potential problems of such behavior. Thank you for attention. Thank you for report. Are there any questions? Можна я задам запитання? У нас є автори присутні, так? Are there any authors present? Так, не бачу, якщо чесно, серед авторів. Перепитайте, будь ласка, чи є потреба задавати тоді питання. Are there authors of the article? Definitely no. Так, знімаю тоді питання. Перепрошую, продовжуємо. Mm -hmm. So we continue. Next report is also presented by Vera Zupanets. The title of the report is The Effect of the Fleet Classroom Model on Quality of the Students' Performance in Biology Education in High School. You're welcome. Uh, dear participants of the conference, uh, dear colleagues, 
Uh, my name is Vera Zsopanec, uh, and uh, I'm associate professor uh, in the field uh, of teaching methods uh, of biology and ecology uh, on Faculty of Sciences at the University of Novi Sad in the uh, Republic uh, of Serbia. Um, it is my pleasure to, on behalf uh, of the team of professors and uh, researchers uh, from the Faculty of Sciences, University of Novi Sad, present the most important results of the work entitled The Effect of the Flipped Classroom Model on the Quality of the Students' Performance in Biology Education in High School. Uh, we conducted this research at a time of widespread use of information and uh, communication technologies in education, as well as the high availability of technological devices to teachers and students at school and at home in order to examine the effectiveness of lived classroom model, FC, and uh, traditional classroom model, TC, in biology and quality of high school student performance. We are uh, witnessing uh, the daily emergence uh, of new learning concepts and uh, teaching approaches in order to improve the learning process. Uh, one of the innovative teaching models that has uh, aroused the interest uh, of education, ed educators, uh, numerous didactics around the world, is the flipped classroom model. Flipped classroom uh, is a pedagogical model uh, that uh, obliges uh, students uh, uh, to access various digital uh, teaching content, videos, multimedia presentations, uh, etc., before class, uh, which introduces uh, them to the content uh, that will be uh, depend in class, and um, that uh, deepening of knowledge uh, in class is done through practical activity students solving specific problems, applying acquired knowledge in new and different situations, uh, as well as productive and creative discussion. This teaching approach uh, puts the student in the center of attention. Thus, uh, in a FC uh, or flipped classroom, um, the focus shifts uh, from the teaching process to active student participation and learning, creating conditions for better interaction uh, among students uh, themselves, as well as between students and teachers and developing students' functional digital competencies. The number of research studies examining the impact of flipped classroom on students' uh, performance in biology education has increased uh, in recent years. Uh, these researchers came to the conclusion that the flipped classroom provides more time for one-to-one -one between the teacher and students. Students have more group work or student uh, collaboration time uh, to cover subject activities, discussions, and peer reviewing. Students' uh, learning can be self-paced to help them learn at their own pace and uh, in their own time. Students uh, are more engaged with flipped classrooms uh, or lectures as they are researching, completing activities or discussing the subject. With traditional teaching, the teacher would generally be providing all of the information to them. As students are researching and discussing themselves, uh, the students gain a deeper understanding of the subject and related subjects. Although all these researchers uh, the search points uh, out the FC as a good alternative to the traditional classroom. There are also those studies that showed that uh, traditional teaching was more efficient in terms of student performance compared to FC. Considering that uh, in the last few years uh, in the Republic of Serbia, thanks to the enthusiasm of a number of biology teachers, Educational material uh, in the form of short YouTube videos for application of FC has been prepared uh, and made uh, publicly uh, available. Uh, one of the key uh, the conditions uh, for its application in biology teaching has been provided uh, in both primary and secondary school. Uh, this created opportunities uh, for greater implementation of this model of work and teaching of biology, but also to test the effectiveness uh, of this model in the implementation of biology programs in teaching practice. 
Therefore, uh, the aim of this paper was to examine the effects of FC model on the quality uh, of students' knowledge at three different cognitive levels, remembering, understanding, and applying, according to the revised Bloom's taxonomy in biology teaching at high school compared to traditional teaching. Observed through teaching practice, uh, the FC model includes two groups uh, of activities, pre-class and in-class learning activities. Within the pre-class activities, uh, the teacher first uh, selects teaching units suitable for processing using the FC model. He or she then prepares the necessary teaching material in the form of educational video lessons in which uh, the material is presented uh, in a, a concise form and uh, distributes it to the students. After that, students have homework to solve and um, it is related to the reviewed educational material in order to gain uh, an understanding of the basic biological concepts uh, that will be covered uh, in more detail in class. As part of preparing students for the class, uh, students can make a brief concept uh, of the reviewed material, extract key information, write down uh, ambiguities and difficulties uh, encountered uh, during reviewing the material, write down a few questions that were not answered in the material and want to know the answers. In the phase of preparation uh, for the class, students should be give, given freedom of expression in accordance with their abilities and the interests, uh, which to some extent uh, achieves individualization in teaching and learning. The video also allows uh, for individualization, namely, each student uh, uh, each student uh, can stop on uh, the rewind a certain part of the recording faster to study the material at home, outside the classroom, and uh, the time frame of the class at the time that suits him best. With this preparation of students for the class, much more time remains uh, in the classroom for conducting in-class activities. In-class activities include more meaningful and creative students' activities uh, related to problem solving and uh, practical application of knowledge in a group form of work uh, that contributes uh, to deepening knowledge and understanding the sense of the studied material. The role of the teacher in the class is to help the students not to give uh, information in a ready-made form. This organization of class activities allows the teacher to devote more time and attention uh, to students who learn more slowly. In this way, the role of the teacher has changed. He, he becomes someone who has time to deal with each student separately and uh, can be a leader, organizer, and mentor. The teacher guides the students in conversation, gives feedback and advice. Uh, such uh, procedures in class uh, complement uh, the individualization of teaching and learning, which is one of the most important advantages of this model of teaching compared to traditional teaching. Also, uh, the value of the flipped classroom is emphasized in a large number of literature uh, sources. There is still an uh, insufficient uh, number of published empirical research papers examining the impact of FC on improved teaching, learning and student, student uh, achievement, especially on the quality of students' knowledge. The results of this study will provide evidence of prevailing situation and uh, provide biology teachers with useful suggestions for the appropriate application of FC in teaching practice. According to the aim of the study, the pedagogical experiment was conducted with parallel groups. Students from the experimental group E studied the contents of the cell structure and function within uh, the biology classes for the first grade of high school by using the FC model, while at the same time, the students uh, of the control group or C group learned uh, the same contents by using the TC uh, or traditional class classroom model. The two groups were evaluated to identify differences in students' cognitive performance by levels of knowledge, remembering, understanding, and applying, according to Bloom's revised taxonomy. A sample of uh, convenience consisted of uh, 280 students from one 
high school in Novi Sad, Serbia, who are participating in the research. In total, every group A and C consists of 40 students. The respondents uh, were the first grade student uh, of high school aged from 14 to 15. Experimental research was carried out uh, in the school year uh, 2018 and 2019 during regular biology classes, uh, which dealt uh, with content related uh, to the cell structure and uh, infections. Uh, the work with students from both groups uh, encompassed uh, a total of uh, uh, 12 uh, regular class periods, each lasting uh, 45 minutes. At the beginning of the research, both of the groups um, uh, of pupils were tested with a pretest in order to synchronize the previous knowledge of students in both groups. After pre-testing, uh, the students in the experimental group uh, learn biology topic uh, through the FC model, whereas uh, the students in the control group were taught to the same topic uh, by the traditional classroom model. Upon uh, completion of the analysis of the teaching topic cell structure and function, students from both groups uh, took the post-test at the same time. The post-test contained questions arranged uh, according to levels of complexity, according to the Bloom's taxonomy, in order to examine uh, the quality of students' knowledge of biology program content, uh, which was preceded uh, in the experimental part uh, of the research using FC models and DC models. Uh, we came uh, to the following results using the described research methodology. The results of students' performance obtained on the pretest, which uh, are shown in Table 1, uh, show that uh, students of both groups achieved uh, the greatest uh, success uh, at the first level of knowledge or level remembering. Weaker success of both groups was achieved uh, at the second level of knowledge, level understanding. Uh, the students of both groups uh, achieved uh, the weakest uh, um, success uh, at uh, the third level of knowledge related uh, to the level of application. By applying uh, the man with new test uh, for the two independent samples, it was concluded that uh, there is no significant difference uh, in uh, the number of points achieved between students in groups E and C at individual levels of knowledge and the test as well. Uh, this proved uh, that the E and C groups uh, before the introduction of the experimental factor were homogeneous uh, according to the quality of knowledge achieved in the pretest. At the end of um, the experimental research, both groups of students of the post test uh, and uh, its results uh, are, sh are shown. Uh, in table uh, three. Uh, the analyzed results obtained on the post test showed uh, that uh, students of both groups achieved uh, the greatest success at uh, first level of knowledge, weaker success uh, of both groups was achieved, uh, was achieved uh, at the second level of knowledge and the weakest success uh, of both groups was achieved at the third level of knowledge. The results uh, achieved on the post-test as a whole uh, and by cognitive levels show differences uh, in favor uh, E group of students. Uh, based on the results of the men with U test for two independent samples and the obtained p-values, shown in table four, it uh, can be concluded that uh, there is a statistically significant difference in the performance of students of E and C groups at individual cognitive levels and um, at the post-test as a whole. Also, the obtained results indicated that the biggest uh, difference in the performance of students uh, of E and C groups was achieved at the second level and then at uh, the third level of knowledge in favor of the E group uh, of students. 
This indicates uh, the positive impact of uh, flipped classroom uh, on the quality of students' knowledge, especially in solving tasks that requ require understanding and uh, application of knowledge in biology in relation to the impact of traditional teaching. In order to examine uh, the progress students in groups A and C, uh, E, uh, experimental groups and uh, control groups during the experimental research, a comparative analysis uh, with books on sign rank test uh, has been used for the results achieved on knowledge test for each group of students individually. The results of this test are shown in table five. The results uh, of the statistical an analysis indicate uh, that the students of group A or the experimental group uh, on the post-test uh, significantly improved compared to the pre-test. Progress of experimental group uh, can be at attributed to their learning, which was individualized and independent. They invested uh, additional effort uh, in independent preparation for the class by reviewing the appropriate video created for the processing of certain teaching content, so that the time in class uh, was not used for frontal lectures by teachers, more for deeper analysis of content, essential understanding of the subject matter through interactive activities with other students and the teacher. The teacher discreetly led the lesson from the background, leaving the students to be maximally active. Such actions of teachers, creative behavior of students during the processing of the teaching topic, the cell structure and function, participation and uh, initiative of, of students in given school activities, interpersonal relationships in classes, interested students in group uh, E for work and personal progress. Integration of all mentioned elements of the flipped classroom improved uh, the teaching of biology and uh, provided students uh, with functional knowledge. Unlike uh, the students of group uh, E, the achievements of the students of C or control group on the pre-test and post-test were very similar. Such as our results uh, are most likely uh, a consequence of the unchanged traditional way of working. During the processing uh, of the biology contents, the students of Group C listened frontal lectures of the teachers, participated to the same extent uh, in the discussion about the studied contents, but not enough to achieve a better learning outcome. Their insufficient uh, uh, involvement uh, in the teaching processes uh, uh, and uh, the lack of initiative to initiate uh, a discussion regarding uh, the studied content led to the realization of significantly lower achievements uh, on the post-test compared to the students of group E. The findings obtained in this study are consistent uh, with the results uh, of their researches who have applied uh, the FC model in teaching biology as well as other subject areas, teaching chemistry, math, science, and social studies in computer interaction course. Based uh, on the analysis of the conducted research and the obtained results, uh, the following conclusions can be drawn. The applications uh, of the FC model in biology teaching has a positive effect uh, on the quality of students' knowledge and their practical applicability, because uh, the studies showed that this innovative teaching approach has a significant impact uh, on the development of competencies, especially for problem solving and critical thinking, as well as the acquisition of functional knowledge as evidenced um, by the fact uh, that there is a statistically significant difference uh, in the achievement of students E and C groups. Uh, achieved on issues of second and third cognitive levels, uh, which requ require remembering and uh, applying knowledge. Uh, based on the results of this study, the flipped classroom should take an appropriate place in the teaching of biology in high school. The results of this research can be an uh, incentive uh, to conduct future similar research, but on larger sample 
in order to obtain more reliable results in the study of this innovative model of work. Uh, another limitation of this study that should be removed in future research uh, is the length of experimental, re experimental research. Also, this paper lacks uh, the effects uh, of FC on knowledge retention. So this uh, effect should be investigated, investigated in future research, considering the positive influences of a flipped classroom on the quality of biology teaching in high school, in spite of some limitations. This study suggests uh, several implications uh, for educa educators. In order for the flipped classroom to be properly uh, implemented in the teaching process, it is necessary for the teacher to follow modern trends in uh, didactic uh, uh, research to improve his professional and uh, uh, didactic knowledge, as well as to develop information, technology skills to apply them in his teaching practice. Thank you for your intention. Thank you for your report. Are there representatives of this report or the authors of the article present? Пані Олі, у нас присутні представники Сербії, видно по учасникам, де вони підписані. Єдине, що прізвище не співпадає з заявленими авторами, жодним із. Перепитайте, будь ласка, можливо, за цим аккаунтом якраз група осіб, група дослідників, тому що цікава доповідь і є запитання. So, uh, other reporters according to this very article? The representatives of these Report are present. Оскільки не відповідають, я узагальню в доповіді було представлено порівняльний аналіз двох моделей освіти, двох моделей навчання. Це традиційна і перевернутого класу, і автори доводять, що модель перевернутого класу вона є доволі ефективною. Тому, якщо у когось виникли якісь запитання, обов'язково, коли будуть оприлюднені їхні статті, там будуть їхні електронні адреси, і можна буде поставити свої запитання і ще письмово. Дякую, продовжуємо. The following report is presented by Тетяна Деркач. The title of the report is ICT-Based Assessment of Cognitive Load in Chemistry Learning. You're welcome. Good day, dear colleagues. You can see the topic of my presentation and uh, uh, the plan of my presentation. Electronic resources are widely used in the training of future chemists. Uh, most often, uh, these are visualization, it may be static and dynamic, which can reflect objects and phenomena close to their natural or abstract form, modeling tools, etc. Despite the huge educational potential of electronic resources, their use uh, doesn't uh, always increase the productivity, the quality of education. This is often due to a significant increase in the cognitive flow of students with the suboptimal combination of educational material presented in different formats. I give you an example. Um, simultaneous demonstration of four windows in different formats leads to cognitive overloading. This work aimed to evaluate the value of cognitive load experienced by students learning organic chemistry topics using a textbook with different electronic resources. Uh, one needs to control changes in the cognitive load of students using electronic resources and take measures to prevent its excessive increase. There are known objective and subjective, direct and indirect methods to measure cognitive loads. In our opinion, the secondary problem method or the method of secondary task is optimal in education. How much of TWA was developed and used to quantify the level to, of uh, cognitive load using this method? 49 third year students of chemical department studied separate topics of organic chemistry presented in various formats, 
text of different complexity, text with video, audio and animation in the different combination. Simultaneously with the study of educational materials, respondents were periodically ordered to perform a secondary task. They must press a button uh, when its color has changed as soon as possible. The faster the secondary task was performed, uh, the less workload the respondent uh, felt. The homemade software allows uh, one to measure the time of respondent's response and process the results uh, statistically. To see description of uh, experiments, uh, a total of six experiments were performed. The first uh, was a blank experiment without a learning task. Uh, the other five experiments uh, contain tasks in different formats. Such experimental schemes allowed us to achieve three goals. Uh, the first, comparison of cognitive load with um, uh, when uh, reading the text of uh, different difficulty levels, experiment one and experiment two. Uh, the second comparison of the cognitive load caused by plain text uh, and the uh, uh, text with video and the uh, audio accompaniment or text with animation experiment one compared to experiment three and four uh, and the effect of video or audio uh, distraction effects experiment five uh, compared with experiment uh, one to four for each experiment, the reaction time t uh, of individual students was determined and uh, the average reaction time for a specific group of students. The relative values are uh, were used to minimize the impact of students' individual characteristics instead of absolute values. Relative values normalized at the time of reaction of the blank experiment. Uh, it's known that the perception of uh, different electronic resources depends on the preferred learning styles of students. Therefore, the learning styles of students using uh, the felder salaman method are investigated. Research of the index of learning styles includes survey respondents and the analysis of their responses to the 44 questions uh, to assess the benefits for four additional aspects. A pair of style versus anti-styles characterizes each dimension. Knowledge of learning preferences allows us to establish correlation uh, with uh, cognitive loads when using different electronic resources. Such correlations will serve as a tool for optimizing electronic resources for teaching. Data verification uh, by the Kalmagorov Smirnov test indicates the presence of a normal distribution of the results of all experiments. The normality of individual data distribution allows us to operate with average values for analysis of the obtained results. You see descriptive statistics. Descriptive statistics give the Average values of the reaction time for each experiment T calculates the relative values of the reaction time R. You see, the minimum load was absorbed in blank experiment and the maximum in experiment number five. However, a simple comparison of average doesn't allow to determine whether the difference between them is statistically significant. You see, uh, comparing the average by the t-test of paired sample. Uh, you can see five of the presented of 10 pairs demonstrate statistically significant difference in the cognitive load. Significant difference are marked in yellow with significantly less than 0 0.05. Simple text experiment one produces less load than complex text experiment two and text with animation experiment three. Video plus audio presentation experiment four involves low loads at complex text two, uh, text with animation three, and text with destruction video experiment five. 
the learning profile of the students group in our experiments you see in red is very similar to that most typical of a natural science students from theory in blue in our picture it demonstrates the predominance of active uh, active sensitive visual and sequential learning styles among the four available dimensions The slide shows the presence or absence of uh, significant differences in cognitive load for a whole group and the subgroups of students with particular learning preferences. For example, the difference between the loads um, exists uh, for a whole group for four of the five experiments for a subgroup of students with a preferred verbal style a significant difference in workload exists only between experiments one and four. To see the results of factor analysis, uh, cumulative percentage of the explained variance by groups and percentage you see in this table. Two main factors explained from 60, around 60 to 80 of the total percent. For example, you can ask me when learning styles are most influential for experiments three and four. And you see, there are two subgroups of students where the cognitive load in experiment three is higher or lower than that in experiment four. If R4 is less than R3, you see in the left in my picture. Global styles is the most important and composes the factor one and the combination of uh, verbal, intuitive and active styles composes factor two. If R3 is less than R4 in the right, active styles composes the factor one and combination of visual, intuitive and global styles composes the factor two. To be effective, the teaching methods and the complexity of the task for students must correspond to the students' perceptions. Points located on the diagonal or close to it in the picture, figure A, show a well-balanced learning process. In this case, the level of students' knowledge corresponds to the complexity of the task. Points located relatively far from the diagonal show learning situation characterized by inconsistence between task complexity and student expertise. Comparing figure A from theory, from model of notes, and our situation in B, we see that the complexity of the form of presentation of information contributes to the growth of cognitive loads. As a result, it requires a high degree of expertise from students to master the task of equal complexity. Obviously, this violates the results of mastering the material in a group of students. Last slide demonstrates you conclusions of our research and uh, I thank you for your attention. Dear colleagues, let me present Thank you for your report. Are there any questions to Tatiana? Oh, sorry, I'm here. I hear you. Можна я перепитаю? У мене є запитання. Пам'ятаю, що Тетяна, пані Тетяна у нас уже не вперше на наших семінарах бере участь. Завжди дуже цікаво слухати ваші змістовні доповіді. Скажіть, будь ласка, з тих методик, які ви описали в своїй статті, які на ваш розсуд, ну, прям ще більш ефективними є для подолання надмірного цього когнітивного навантаження, яке відчувають сьогодні наші здобувачі освіти? No, Thank you for the participants uh, in our conference. We see that you are taking part not at first. And the question, what are the effective methods uh, uh, are presented? Can you recommend? Я думаю, що те, що зараз відчувають наші студенти, це зовсім новий виклик, і ми, чесно кажучи, тільки обмір... ну, 
просто можемо трішки осмислити, що зараз відбувається, бо вони вчаться в зовсім інших умовах і когнітивне навантаження у них дуже високе, тому що на це впливає навіть, коли вони чують тривогу під час проведення заняття онлайн. Ми просто повинні про це пам'ятати і я думаю, що це є для нас ну, найближчих досліджень тематикою точно. Ми повинні знайти рішення, як їм допомагати і адаптувати їх до тих умов, щоб їм не було надмірного зростання навантаження, вони не втрачали інтересу до навчання, щоб вони впоралися з цим. От, а з методик, ну, методика в, за от, вимірювання самого навантаження – все одно, я думаю, що залишається те, що стосується використання вторинних задач. Просто вони можуть бути не обов'язково програмним забезпеченням, яке ми розробили. Це може бути якась інша задача. Єдине, що правильно треба її побудувати, цей процес дослідження, щоб ця вторинна задача займала ті самі ресурси, які під час виконання основної задачі. Ну, от я думаю, що можна знайти такий варіант. There are a lot of questions and uh, difficulties about the problem how students uh, uh, feel during today online education because it is awful of the war and uh, other problems. Um, and of course, the cognitive influence takes uh, the main role. And it is still a question how to help them, how to help our students to solve uh, their problems, their feeling and other um, mistakes, misunderstanding. And of course, the method of measuring is uh, present to solve uh, this problem. But we are still in research. So we continue. Uh, the next report uh, is uh, presented by Christina Bujagan. And the title of the report is Visualization, the school organic chemistry course with augmented reality. You're welcome. Dear colleagues, let me present the topic of our research, visualizing the school organic chemistry course with augmented reality. A successful modern person has to possess such qualities as creative, analytical, innovation thinking, the team project work abilities, information literacy and effective information and communication technology skills. STEM education has become vitally important. The main advantage of it is the complex integration of interdisciplinary approach units with the project study that combines natural sciences with technology and engineering. Natural sciences are mostly experimental. Memorizing natural science knowledge effectively depends not only on the theory supply form, but also from realizing the experimental part, which requires proper theoretic training both for the teacher and for the student. The digital era, especially nowadays during the war in our country and under the national pandemic circumstances, the whole study is fully or partially remote. In this case, information and communication technologies are critical, considering the fact that the main study tool for a present-day student is not a personal computer or a laptop, but a cell phone. The school chemistry course provides visualization of molecules in 3D. As far as the AR technology is multifunctional, it plays video files, audio files, images, 3D models, its implies within the school chemistry course is pretty wide. That's why AR technology must be combined with the study content, which will include the text data as well uh, in the perceptible for the modern age students grade. The new era student needs not so much knowledge, but what they do need is to think consequently and critically. They need the intellectual activity. When the students themselves cooperate with the object studied, they investigate the environment in a better way. That is why, while working with students, practical methods should be prioritized. One of the perspective approaches which expedite solving this problem is lab booking. What is a lab book? Lab book is a multifunctional folder that contains packets and mounts for a variety of didactic material. This type of project is universal. It can be developed from any topic to any subject. 
It promotes the development of the creativity, imagination, can be used simultaneously by a group of students and has its didactic properties. Making a lab book allows to find work for each student in the team. Someone comes up with a concept, someone looks for information, someone is engaged in design, someone expresses its public speaking skills and presents the results of work to the class. Creating a lab book helps capture and classify the learned material and overviewing it allows to refresh the completed subjects pretty quick. That is also a good way to replay the learned info. The objective of our research is developing a lab book designed for studying carbohydrates according to the 10th grade chemistry program with augmented reality and investigating its efficiency while studying organic chemistry. It includes the theories, tasks and image markers for the mobile app with augmented reality. The developed lab book provides the information according to the 10th grade chemistry program includes formula and molecular structures of glucose, fructose, sucrose, starch and cellulose, nutrition value of carbohydrates, carbohydrates in food products, their impact on the human body, methods of production and refining of sucrose from different stock material, nutrition products containing sugar and interesting facts about carbohydrates. A free mobile application Lacoste Team Sugar powered by Android was developed in order to visualize the chemical structure of carbohydrates and reproduce the laboratory experiment videos, which can be used both by the teacher and by the students to study the carbohydrates topic. Augmented reality markers designed for the AR technology were developed on the Fuforia platform. 3D objects uh, were modeled with the 3D Max app. Augmented reality objects were realized with multi-platform tool designed for developing two- and three-dimensional mobile application Unity 3D. The 3D pictures of molecules of carbohydrates, learning which is required by the study program, give the opportunity to visualize the molecules of glucose, fructose, sucrose to the max point, make them alive, develop and boost the student's spatial intelligence and to give a deeper understanding of the study data received by air, which will boost its memorizing and building specific practical skills. This method has much more advantages comparing to computer programs as far as it gives the opportunity to visualize the lab book images no matter where the student is located, in class, during the city sightseeing, at home, etc on the cell phone, and it does not require a computer or a laptop. And what about experiments? We can solve this problem too. Simple and safe experiments on the topic that can be performed at home were selected. For the purpose of building practical skills while studying this topic, students can perform the following experiments. Analyzing the starch concentration of nutritive products, investigating starch concentration in cereal crops, identifying carbohydrates. Video data of laboratory experiments were created for the purpose of supplying the experimental part. The developed video are displayed on a form screen after connecting them with individual marker images in the lab book. The figure on the slide gives an example of one of the developed markers for the recommended laboratory experiments on the carbohydrates topic located in the lab book. Also, the lab book carbohydrates provides the setup of industrial production of sugar from sugar beet, which every student can overview in AR. When the cell phone or tablet is pointed on the particular marker, an animation video is displayed on the screen. An example we can see on the screen now. In order to identify the curiosity of 10th grade students in using the augmented reality and its efficiency during the chemistry lesson, students of high school number 24 in Ivano-Frankiv city took a survey. The survey was taken by 60 people. The survey results show that each student has a personal mobile device that can be used for a study, 
and all the students have used uh, mobile apps with AR within the study process and 100% of surveyed have confirmed the advantages and uh, the technology's benefit in during the chemistry lessons. Furthermore, 83.87% uh, of the survey think um, these technologies would be efficient during other lessons. The survey results picture is shown on figure. The students using the lab book Carbohydrates integrated with the mobile app Lycosting Sugar while studying the theory had higher results, which uh, is confirmed with the increase of education achievement rates. The calculation results are given in the table. So we can make the conclusion that providing mobile education technologies not only lift study to a new level, supplying the users access to knowledge 24 hours a day with no matter where they are, but also give wide opportunities for the students. In the cooperation with AR, LabBook is an interesting interactive tool of study, which makes the teacher's work easier, visualizes the theories in good quality and boosts the student's perception level. Thank you for your attention. Take care. Thank you for your report. Are there any questions to Cristina? Питання є. Пані Христино, я скажу вам, що на внутрішню мотивацію ваша доповідь впливає. Я б хімію таку складну і, і не дуже зрозуміло таки захотіла почити по тому, що ви показали. Але суть мого питання зводиться до наступного. Скажіть, будь ласка, чи от, от така от дуже гарна візуалізація за допомогою засобів доповненої реальності, вона не призведе з часом до того, що витіснемо таким чином живий експеримент. Дітям це буде набагато цікавіше, ніж самостійно щось там робити і щось там змішувати. Добре, you know, not realization led uh, to those that children will study uh, chemistry only with the help of visualization, but not the ordinary method. Thank you. Доброго дня, дякую за запитання. Дійсно, так як ви говорите, більшість, коли чують, чим я займаюся, хімією, думають, що це якесь таке щось страшне, щось дуже тяжке, і так зразу відхрещуються від тої науки. Саме такі методи, як липбукінг в поєднанні, особливо з доповненою реальністю, коли діти можуть самостійно і провести якісь досліди, і побачити, як та молекула виглядає, вони мотивують до навчання. Звісно, не варто відсувати традиційні методи також навчання, але саме з мотивацією допомагає справитися саме такі види проєктів. Вони можуть бути і міжпредметними, ті проєкти, оскільки лебук, технологія лебукінгу дозволяє розглянути досліджуваний об'єкт з різних сторін і показати його цілісно, а не відірваним від, від світу і тільки з одного боку. Однобоку. Так, і тому діти мотивовані, діти хочуть працювати і хочуть, хочеться для них тоді виробляти ще більше і більше різних цікавинок, не забуваючи також про традиційне навчання, звісно. А оці от буки Вичали. ви робите чи учні роблять самостійно? Ми розробляємо каркас і доповнену реальність, а лебуки учні можуть зробити навіть в самостійному вигляді, так як вони хочуть, але маркери доповненої реальності, звісно, мусять бути в такому вигляді, аби вони відтворювались програмою. Хоча ми не обмежуємо своїх учнів, ми даємо їм свободу, політ фантазії, креативності, вони загораються тим і це дуже тішить. Usually people uh, are saying that chemistry is something difficult, uh, but uh, this uh, method visualization help uh, children to understand chemistry better and to motivate them. But of course, we shouldn't forget about uh, the traditional method of studying, but this uh, project uh, visualization can be mixed with uh, other subjects too. Дозвольте мені ще доповнити Христину Васильівну. 
стосовно візуалізації, так, і чи не завадиться, власне, хімічному експерименту реальному. Ну, дуже багато моїх колег, коли дійсно побачили, чим ми займаємося і як ми хочемо це імплементувати в навчальний процес, у них всіх виникло таке запитання, як і у вас, власне. Так, і що ми побачили? Ми побачили, що це не тільки не заважає, а ще й спонукає дітей, тому що якщо вони бачать виконаний експеримент, переглядають, їм кортить його зробити і отримати такий результат. Але, власне, плюс в тому, що вони вже бачать, який результат вони мають отримати, тобто вони вже мотивовані до самого виконання, так? і в процесі виконання досвіду вони роблять менше тих помилок, якихось практичних, і одержують той результат, який вони хочуть отримати. Ну, звичайно, що це є плюс. І ще хочу сказати про те, що якщо учню давати працювати з такими проєктами, от як працює е, наша команда, так, вони наслідують е, вчителів, які з ними працюють, і вони так само починають рухатися в цьому напрямку, креативність у них зашкалює, так, і вони починають давати дуже такі продуктивні, конструктивні ідеї, і це спонукає і нас, і спонукає їх. Тобто така кооперація, вона є дуже продуктивною не тільки для учня, для самого вчителя. Дякую. The visualization should be implemented in the process of study and education because it also gives good results and the student became more creative. So let's continue. And uh, the report next is presented by Tatiana Starova. And the title of the report is The Use of uh, Argumented Reality in Chemistry Lessons in the Study of Oxygen-Containing Organic Compounds Using the Mobile Application Bleepo. You're welcome. Greet the uh, participants of the conference and uh, offer to listen uh, to uh, our source uh, result. Why did we choose uh, this topic, uh, topic oxygen containing organics? Because it is uh, mandatory to study the following classes of the organic compounds. Alcohols, phenols, aldehydes and ketones. Carboxylic acids, uh, esters, uh, fats, uh, carbohydrates. According to recommendation of the Ukrainian Education Minister for the profile level of studying uh, chemistry at school in this uh, topic, uh, should be uh, conducted uh, three practical works, five laboratory experiments uh, and uh, show it at least uh, 18 demonstration experiments. The use of such forms uh, of work makes it uh, possible to study the chemical and physical properties of uh, substance by direct uh, observation and uh, comparison. Uh, with uh, other compounds already known to students. Why did we choose uh, use IT technologies? Uh, because our country it, uh, has some causes, for example, COVID-19, actualization distance learning during uh, wartime now, and uh, there are secondary schools that do it to certain uh, circumstances uh, don't have the necessary equipment and uh, regions for quality work provided uh, by the program. Uh, we think augmented reality use allows teachers uh, of natural science uh, to teach education materials with the necessary visual aids and uh, to conduct uh, laboratory and practical works uh, remotely. In this situation, you can also turn to uh, augmented reality technology and give studies the opportunity to get uh, acquainted and gain experience uh, in absentia with uh, certain equipment in its uh, absence. Why have we choose uh, Blipper Herb? because it's a mobile application that can be used uh, for gadget uh, based on an Android uh, and iOS. Mm, uh, it is uh, very easy to use, uh, just point the camera of the working application on the appropriate uh, marker. Also, it has an advantage uh, in, in the ability to create uh, uh, your own marker and uh, model that will be uh, displayed during use. Uh, 
In addition to uh, 3D models, you can uh, add videos regular to um, the images, uh, text and audio files for viewing while the uh, user can reproduce uh, that we saw uh, on any surface. The augmented reality marker type uh, has basic uh, requirements. Uh, for example, uh, sufficient content of information, easy of use, clear orientation, high quality and uh, sharpness of the image, uh, visibility um, of materials. Uh, also, it was decided to make uh, them bright and interesting to attract the attention of students. Um, you can see uh, some images with profession and uh, uh, chemical flex. Um, we think uh, it visually highlights the connection to chemistry. Uh, we have put all uh, of these augmented reality markers uh, together in one kit called uh, Oxygen uh, Organic and uh, uploaded them to Google Drive. <coughs> we shot some uh, of the necessary videos um, ourselves and some of them we borrowed from uh, YouTube video hosting. The video was created uh, without uh, a soundtrack, uh, but explanation of the pictures uh, was realized uh, through uh, writing comments. This solves uh, another problem, uh, namely reduce the time of the video uh, that uh, allows teacher uh, using them during regular lessons, uh, lasting uh, 45 minutes. The Blipar uh, has uh, two versions, free and paid. Uh, we use uh, the free version uh, of the Blipar app. After the implementation of our de developments in the education process, uh, a server um, was conducted to analyze uh, the effectiveness uh, of the technology using among uh, 10 grade students, so, which included open-ended question uh, that you see on the slide. Uh, can I not read them? Uh, 60, uh, 60 Five students uh, of Kriverik Secondary Schools, uh, number uh, 15, took part in the survey. According to the students' answer, um, we have the following results. Uh, our method uh, is more interesting for study chemistry, uh, difficult to understand uh, elements of the topic uh, become, became uh, more understandable. Uh, opportunity to study chemistry at home, uh, good visualization, non-standard uh, approach uh, to the study of chemistry. At the same time, we have created a ready-made uh, set of markers uh, and clarity for lesson that uh, will help the teacher. Saving time in class, opportunity to perform uh, more exp experiment and practical work, a good uh, visualization too, organization of independent work of uh, students, uh, saving time in preparation for lessons. Therefore, we can summarize. The Blipar platform uh, is quite easy to use there, a chemistry teacher can can create additional uh, methodological uh, developments without uh, the special skills of programmer. 
Application of augmented reality technology in teaching chemistry in study of the topic oxygen containing uh, organics. their independent uh, cognitive activity, improves understanding of the uh, spatial structure of organic molecules, uh, provides uh, of opportunity to non-trivial uh, explain education material, provides an opportunity to organize laboratory and practical works remotely, uh, maintains uh, a high level uh, of cognitive uh, activity of students and the opportunity to acquire a le uh, relevant knowledge in the process of distance learning. Uh, also has great uh, prospects uh, in teaching chemistry to students who don't have uh, the opportunity to attend schools. Also, Uh, I'm sorry, some technical problems. Uh, uh, our host um, is uh, offline now. Uh, I, it seems to be temporary. Uh, but um, uh, you can see uh, at least, uh, no, almost on 100 persons, uh, the video talk of um, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, this, uh, this presentation from, from Kriverich State Pedagogical University. Uh, so I can ask you to uh, make some proposition or, or questions. Uh, to this talk. Uh, at least, uh, it seems, uh, one of uh, authors uh, of this uh, presentation uh, is now online. Diana, uh, I see you. You are here. Mm -hmm. No, so uh, we can uh, wait uh, a minute or two when the um, uh, leading speaker uh, for this presentation uh, will reconnect uh, to us, uh, or uh, we can uh, continue um, uh, our presentations. Uh, uh, according to the questions, uh, to the talk of uh, Diana Karnishin, Tatiana Starova, Pavlona Tsipurenka, etc., uh, I seems, uh, I propose uh, to make uh, the needful questions uh, no, um, uh, after, uh, after next presentation. Uh, it is possible? Dear Olga. Uh, Pavlo uh, with us. Uh, we don't hear you. Так, уже все нормально. Інтернет фактнувся. Є один із авторів Тетяна Селіванова. Їй можна задати питання. Або мені. У мене є питання до вас, автори. 
У нас продовжили ми тему, яку розпочали попередні доповідачі. Знову у нас доповнена реальність, яка допомагає формувати внутрішню мотивацію здобувачів освіти, яка робить цікавим, яка робить цікавим складний зміст хімії. Скажіть, будь ласка, ваші статті і зазначається про те, що ця платформа, яку ви пропонуєте, вона є надзвичайно простою, вона є безкоштовною. А які недоліки таких платформ і от чи є такі якісь випадки, коли не бажано під час вивчення хімії використовувати саме от платформи для візуалізації ось такі? So the, your platform, which you presented, is simple and free, but are there any disadvantages when uh, we shouldn't use this app? Thank you for the question. Ну, скажімо так, взагалі то при вивченні хімії бажано використовувати реальний експеримент, але в умовах, в яких перебували ми до цього під час карантину і зараз в яких ми умовах знаходимося, то саме використання доповненої реальності дуже допомагає. У нас, ну, на жаль, не все було змогли показати на ролику з цими технічними проблемами, але все у нас в нашій роботі не тільки спрямовано на те, щоб показати там формулу, візуалізувати її, а і ще використання відео самого експерименту. У нашій роботі представлені декілька лабораторних робіт. Це власне відео безпосередньо демонстраційних дослідів або ж відео з декілька взяти з Ютуба. І відповідно ці експерименти, вони дають змогу все ж таки дітям побачити і зміну кольору під час, наприклад, певних експериментів, які супроводжуються зміною кольором, також дозволяють взагалі побачити техніку виконання цього експерименту, а коли вже дитина приходить безпосередньо у реальну лабораторію, то до цього, побачивши цей експеримент, може всі ці дії виконувати, власне, в своєму досвіді. Ось таким чином. Тобто все не спрямоване на те, що це тільки візуалізація молекул. Ну, далі просто там відео повинно бути якраз цих безпосередньо лабораторних робіт виконання. Хоча так, замінити експеримент цілісно неможливо на віртуальний експеримент. Але дуже допомагає саме в той момент, коли ми не можемо потрапити до лабораторії. Також, якщо дитина хворіла, наприклад, вона теж може якраз цей експеримент побачити і відчути себе учасником саме такого дійства. Дякую. So, of course, it is necessary to use a real experiment, but in today's situation, online education, it is the best solution uh, to see everything. And uh, we give uh, not only visualization, but we also provide the video of our own experiments or other videos from YouTube, for example, and it gives an opportunity to see the experiment on your own eyes. Thank you, Zavid. Mm -hmm. So we continue. The following report is presented by Yaroslav Vasilenko, and the title of the report is STEM Center as a Factor in the Development of Formal and Non-Formal STEM Education. You're welcome. Dear conference participants, my name is Vasil Oleksiuk, and I am one of the authors of the research entitled STEM Center as a Factor in the Development of Formal and Non-Formal STEM Education. Non-Formal Education is a component to formal education and it's necessary to increase the positive attitude of pupils and students toward the various STEM disciplines. There are growing number of non-formal STEM subjects around the world. The concept of ecosystem 
is still evolving uh, and uh, there is uh, no clear uh, definition. We view the learning ecosystem of formal and non-formal STEM learning as emerging practices for the future. The Education Ecosystem Center uh, is a core that includes both the community of education providers and those who learn and develop. The main characteristic of the ecosystem of the STEM center such as harmonious combination of formal and informal components, increasing the motivation of students to learning of STEM sciences, updating of educational and professional development programs, use of non-formal education approaches, connection with external communities of STEM professionals, building partnership between schools and non-formal institutions. The STEM Center plays an important role on the Ternopil Vladimir Natyuk National Pedagogical University campus. Scientists of the Department of Computer Science have created a model of functioning of the educational STEM Center. The main components of this model you can see on this slide. Uh, this model was tested over the last six years. These and other studies shows that the center has become the main educational platform for the development of STEM educational in uh, our region. We focused our research on improving the effectiveness of learning in STEM sciences. One of the most difficult parts of the uh, STEM curriculum is to create a context for students to gain experience in the process of uh, critical and creative thinking. In our opinion, uh, the use of innovative learning tools provides an effective methodology for the formation of high-level thinking skills, such as use, recognize and analyze models, focus on inquiry and investigation, communicate effectively, understand multiple connect areas, uh, usage plan, act, understand, evaluate methodology. The formal component of our model realizes through the implementation of modern educational programs, curriculums, and elective courses. STEM disciplines are included in the program of specialties computer science, mathematics, physics, chemistry, and biology. In particular, such special courses are taught as 3D modeling, 3D printing, design thinking, fundamentals of robotics, STEM projects, and more. They are about the integration of knowledge from different fields and teaching students how to solve real problems. Most teachers receive training mainly in only one discipline. This is a serious challenge for educators. Therefore, we organized advanced training for teachers in our STEM center. We have tested training programs for teachers, methodologies and learning materials for employees of educational institutions, forms to experience the exchange of teachers practicing STEM education. We believe that training in research STEM practice was important. This process required the involvement of teachers in real research projects such as smart greenhouse, smart home, and smart weather station. These projects were implemented jointly by teachers of our department and students majoring in computer science. Experts uh, were also invited to the project. They motivated students and demonstrated how to perform a research task. Today, STEM education requires a lot of communication formats. These are discussion, exchange of experience, and presentation of methods, techniques, practice, working group, and joint projects. In our opinion, the implementation of STEM education must involve various actors such as government agencies and structures, local communities and government, business and corporation, individual education institutions, and non-government organizations. One of the projects to promote STEM education was the grant promotion of STEM professions. It was supported by British 
Council's Active Citizen Program. It hosted the organization of interactive study tours, field school, forums, festivals, STEM workshop, and more. The project promotion of STEM professions increases the awareness of pupils with some STEM professional. As a result of the project, more than 300 pupils were involved in choosing a future professional in the field of nature, science, and mathematics. We carry out a survey study that targeted highly experienced teachers, methodologists, and instructors, call it experts. Table 1 shows the investigated dimensions and the related surveys, items, and response categories in our study. We collected responses from 130 experts from an educational institution in our region. We divided the educational achievement of pupils and postgraduate students into four categories from primary school students to postgraduate students. Uh, experts could make multiple choices by answering questions of our survey. In terms of formal and non-formal education, the coverage of uh, curricular subjects is shown in this figure. Uh, when using STEM methods of education, the ratio of formal and non-formal learning activities reaches half for most of the subject covered. Only for the humanities and social sciences, the percentage of non-formal learning activities is much lower, only about 28%. This is due to the specific of the subject and readiness of teachers to use the methods of STEM education and teaching their subjects. If we analyze how much the purpose of educational activities is achieved, the following conclusion can be drawn. P1 competence are the best format when uh, using methods of STEM education in such subjects as I explore the world, technology, and mathematics. Uh, this is a logical conclusion if we take into account the characteristic of the P1 competences and the content of this subject. For nature science, P1 competences are observed at the level of uh, 30 persons. Uh, the formation of P2 qualities is the best manifested in the study of English, literature, art, and social science. The formation of P3 qualities may seem a bit strange when studying the nature subjects and computer science, but this is because the study of these disciplines in uh, STEM uses the project's method. It is often focuses on solving practically significant problems. Before competence are formed at the level of uh, 10 to 25 persons in all subjects, except uh, I explore the world. We apply experiments correlation for investigation, the type of learning activity. Subject purpose was constructed on the base of survey data. The value of the correlation coefficient R shows uh, that the relation between uh, the activities uh, results and the subject at this stage is still weak. Uh, this situation can be explained by the fact uh, that the STEM education is currently at the initial stage of implementation. Kramer's coefficient V indicates a positive relationship between the purpose and learning and subject. This correlation will be stronger if the STEM approach is implemented further with the greater consideration of efforts. Uh, we examined uh, the relationship between the target audience and the covered curricular subject on the base of cross tabulation audience subject. For examining the association of the variables, a uh, uh, C-squared independent stance was used. It shows that the significant association between the target audience and the covered curricular subject exists. Here are some uh, results and conclusions from this study. The author's model of the STEM ecosystem includes educational policy, assessment, curricula, elective courses, undergraduate education, teacher training, and others. Uh, the functioning of the STEM center, according to the 
proposed model has led the, to the creation of a model educational environment. The impact of use of uh, STEM education methods on learning outcomes according to the criteria proposed in the surveys is typically significant, but uh, this relationship is currently weak. The next development of STEM education requires the concentration of efforts of all parties involved in education to develop uh, the relevant ecosystem and train motivated teachers. Thank you for your attention. Maybe you have uh, some questions. Are there any questions, dear colleagues? Чи є запитання у наших колег? Якщо можна, я запитаю. Скажіть, будь ласка, для організації такої системи, системи освіти, формальної, неформальної, тобто, як ви там красиво назвали її екосистема, системи освіти, звідки взагалі беруться кошти на організацію такого, ну, окрім грантів, я так розумію. Тобто, чи є якісь програми у нас державні, ну, яким чином йде підтримка цього процесу? Where do I take fees for uh, this um, project uh, except grants? Thank you for the question, Paul. We want to give the opportunity to answer this question of one of the authors, it's Nadia Bava. Вітаю, шановні колеги. Дякуємо за запитання. Дійсно актуальне питання зараз для України. І ви бачите в нашій доповіді, що крім підтримки університету, ми активно використовуємо грантову підтримку, беремо участь в великій кількості проєктів. Зараз ми маємо Україно-Норвежський проєкт, і також є підтримка програмних забезпечення, є підтримка певним обладнанням. Ну і зрозуміло, наш ентузіазм, якби наше бажання все-таки розвивати стем напрям, і ми його почали розвивати надзвичайно рано, ми вже в 2016 році мали організований стем-центр, і всі ось ці моделі, які ви бачите, багато чого це своїми руками, це мейкерство, це якісь фанеру, яку ми там приносили з дому, тобто це якісь підручні матеріали, часто це також тримається і на ентузіазмі. Тобто, все-таки бажання робити це, і коли є бажання, то і відкриваються якісь дороги друзі, люди, які підтримують, і в такий спосіб ми пройшли цю дорогу. Зроблено дуже багато проєктів, реально ми кажемо, що неформальна освіта, ми, до речі, побачили, що коли студенти не тільки формально відвідують лекції, семінари, а коли вони в активній позиції і вони їздять по області, по місту, проводять наукові пікніки, проводять майстер-класи, то це зовсім інша позиція, коли вони повинні не тільки продемонструвати модель, вони її створюють, демонструють роботу, залучають учнів. І, власне, така позиція, коли студенти наші не тільки як суб'єкти, але стають активними суб'єктами навчання, начального процесу і самі стоїть співтворцями проєктів і робота, яка ведеться з учнями, з вчителями, дає найбільш такий цікавий результат, ефект від якості, від навчання, від того, наскільки це вмотивовано, наскільки це цікаво і глибоко. Ну, от це такий наш практичний досвід, і можемо сказати, що дійсно, напевно, зараз освіта шукає оцих шляхів, цих змішаних форм навчання, як правильно поєднати формальне навчання з неформальним, з тим, що Багато людей зараз навчається в мережі, використовує різні джерела інформації. І на нашу думку, ми розпочали цю дорогу, ми шукаємо ці найбільш такі прийнятні форми такої інтеграції формальної і неформальної освіти. В першу чергу тим, що самі шукаємо ці дороги і ведемо за собою студентів. Дякую за запитання.
So uh, we use uh, grant support, of course, and uh, we receive a lot of support from abroad. But uh, the main is, of course, uh, our own great wish. We do a lot of ourselves, and uh, friends uh, help too. But when students uh, became active, of course, uh, it became more useful uh, for the studying, and the project became active, it's effective itself. But non-formal and formal education is the course of mixed form of education. So we continue. The next report is presented by Volodymyr Proshkin, and the title of the report is STEM Education in the Context of Improving the Science and Mathematics Literacy of Pupils. You're welcome. Dear colleagues, uh, let me introduce the results of our research uh, on the topic STEM educational in the context of improving the science and mathematics literacy of uh, pupils. The authors of our project are Lilia Grinevich, Ludmila Khoruja, Nina Rudenka, and Vladimir Proshkin. According to the concept of development of natural and mathematical education or STEM education, natural and mathematical education is one of the main factors of innovation educational development economy and the needs of society. In this context, one of the most important conditions for the implementation of STEM education is the formation of uh, pupils science and medical leaders. At the same time, the results of the international comprehensive study PISA in which Ukrainian 15 years old uh, pupils uh, took part for the first time in 2018 show trends in low academic achievements in science and mathematics. In particular, uh, over 66 percentage of our pupils did not reach the uh, basic level of mathematical literacy. In science, literacy is over 26 percentage. STEM education in Ukrainian schools faces a number of problems, including uh, declining levels of teaching, science and mathematics often complaints uh, of educational contents with uh, current requirements teaching science and mathematics to teachers of other specialties low quality textbooks back uh, in some educational institution appropriate uh, conditions to provide free professional training and specialized training of natural and mathematical subjects at in turn, the lack of knowledge does not allow school leaders to choose professional related to science and mathematics to continue their studies. In addition, the modern labor market offers more and more competitive vocations every day, but the weak natural and mathematical training of young people makes it difficult to select candidates for vocations. Analytical Center, Seed Analytica, or Boris Gryvchenko Kiev University, with the Educational Agency of Kyiv and the Ukrainian Center of Educational Quality Assessment uh, organized and conducted the study of science and uh, mathematical literacy for 15 years uh, old uh, pupils. In, in most countries, it's the uh, age uh, that uh, pupils graduate from a general school and face a choose of profession. You can see the purpose of the study on your screen in uh, this presentation, I will show only part of them, another you will find in our um, article. Respondents of the monitoring study on the uh, quality of natural and mathematical education of uh, pupils of uh, schools were a representative sample. Uh, 3,135 uh, pupils, uh, 976 uh, teachers, and 195 directors of school. The tools of the research included the test uh, task for pupils developed uh, by the staff of the Ukrainian Center of Educational uh, Quality Testing. The deadline for testing uh, is September 28, 2021. This article presents some of the results of the monitoring study, which uh, reveals the problem the ability to solve uh, practice problems as part uh, of the formation of science and mathematical literacy for people to implement 
quality STEM education. The cluster with six integrated tasks was developed to demonstrate to pupils the possibilities of considering uh, certain phenomena in the perspective for different disciplines, such as geography, chemistry, biology, and physics. The cluster task was built around a cross-cutting theme. Limnological catastrophe, rare natural phenomena was chosen as a challenge topic. The wording of the question involved considering of the phenomena from different angles. The subject had to assess the importance of knowledge about the geographical laws of nature for human life, compare the, the geographic features of lakes, establish the relationship between physical quantities, analyze facts and explain them, apply theoretical knowledge in life. In addition, all test participants had to demonstrate a sufficient level of proficiency not only in science, but also in mathematical literacy. As the task requires the application for knowledge of mathematics. On your screen, you may see two examples of this task. The total number of points of the task is 20. According to the number of points and the complexity of the task, there are four levels of pure possibility to apply knowledge of science and mathematics to solve practical problems, primary, intermediate, sufficient, and higher. To describe these indicators of these levels, the approach of determining the levels of formation of nature and mathematical literature in the PISA study is used. According to the results of the study, the state of formation of science and mathematical literature of pupils as ability to apply knowledge to solve practical problems for the implementation of STEM education. Uh, 6.3% of uh, pupils from uh, the total number of test participants reach a higher level. 27.9% uh, sufficient, 42.2% uh, intermediate, and 23.6% uh, primary. In this figure, we demonstrate the information about percentage of pupils who gave the correct answer to individual test questions with practice-oriented integrated tasks. As a result of the monitoring study, it was established. Almost half of the tests the participants are able to assess the geographical pattern of nature of a particular area for human life. About a quarter of those tests that are able to explain phenomena based on physical and biological knowledge, including the laws of biology and uh, physics. The most difficult for the test was the task of chemistry, which indicates a rather low quality of mathematical literacy. The task uh, tested the ability to apply methodical method to solve problems of uh, chemical context. The easiest task was the task of geography. As a result of the monitoring study and recommendations we were prepared for general secondary education institutes for further implementation of STEM education. These recommendations are connected with unlocking the competence potential of mathematics and sciences, in particular to pay attention to the competence paradigm practical life uh, problems uh, that are relevant to pupils and motivate them to learn. Uh, we also propose the introduction of interactive learning technologies, active use in the learning process of interdisciplinary practice-oriented tasks, raising the status of mathematics in the integrative approach to the implementation of state education. Thank you for your attention. Thank you for your report. Dear colleagues, are there any questions? Volodymyr Vadimovich, звук, будь ласка. Ви мене чуєте? Добрий день, шановні колеги. Враховуючи, що для авторів дослідження, які присутні, робоча наукова мова є німецька, прошу, щоб надали можливість при обговоренні розмовляти українською. 
Of course. Чи є питання? Можна. В роботі було описано дослідження компетентності вчителів різних природничо-математичних дисциплін, і, наскільки я так зрозумів, воно ґрунтувалось на опитуванні директорів шкіл. То от цікаво, чи ну, не могли якісь суб'єктивні причини вплинути на результати такого оцінювання, і е, таке вже от, давно заплановане Міністерством освіти такий захід, як ЗНО для вчителів, не могло б в даному випадку дати якісь більш, можливо, правильні, якісні, релевантні результати. So, is there any subjective influence on your results? Could be. Ну, можливо, я розпочну, а потім професор Лінова Хоружа ще додасть. Справа в тому, що це дослідження проводилось на замовлення Київської міської державної адміністрації, і одна із, одна із найжливіших умов – це анонімність опитування, тобто ті дані, які були отримані в результаті опитування директорів шкіл, вчителів і учнів, ви бачили, яка значна вибірка у нас була, вони всі були анонімні, і ми не порівнювали рай... різні райони міста Києва на відповіді. Тобто не було такої можливості, щоб певний вчитель, предметник чи певний керівник закладу освіти ну, певним чином щось говорив не так, як що відповідає дійсності. Отже, все було анонімно. So the research was made uh, on the order and there were no opportunity uh, for nothing went wrong. They were, the questions were anonymous. Thank you. Мене є ще запитання, можна пані? Шановні автори, трохи задам таке питання, можливо, риторичне за характером, але, я думаю, ця відповідь на запитання буде узагальненням, власне, двох доповідей, які були присвячені з теми освіти. Отже, сьогодні з теми освіта – це данина моді чи необхідність, чи такі за з теми освітою майбутнє? So, is STEM education is something new, modern or necessity? Uh, still not hear you. Мікрофончик. Uh, пані Людмила, може ви на листі відповідь? Доброго дня, шановні колеги. Да, теж проблеми трошки з звуком, включення. Ну, я теж люблю так називати свої е, статті, навіть зараз пишу статтю, і так само через е, знак питання. Дуже гарне запитання. Звичайно, майбутнє. Майбутнє і виклики часу, перед якими зараз ми встали. Е, і тут, як кажуть, беззаперечно, тільки ми доводимо своїм дослідженням, доводимо, як кажуть, те, про що ви запитали. Я ще хотіла би додати ну, одну таку невеличку ремарку до того, що сказав Володимир Вадим, що це не тільки було дослідження університету, не тільки замовлення державної відділу освіти, департаменту освіти, Київської міської адміністрації. Нам ще в цій роботі, і це теж як абсолютно незаангажований фактор, допомагав Центр соціологічних досліджень, який створений при департаменті освіти. То це був такий, ну скажімо, колективний проект, який дав можливість отримати результати. І до цього ось ті приклади завдань, які наводились в презентації, що стосуються інтегра... інтеграції, міждисциплінарності, це теж все елементи STEM освіти. Якраз це, от, мені здається, таке доповнення до попередньої презентації, яку ми дивились, да, відповідно вже до конкретних предметів. Ну, ось те, що хотіла додати. Дякую. Of course, STEM it is future, and we prove it with the help of our research. And uh, we wanted to add that the Center of Social Research was also implemented during our work. So it's a collective research work. 
And the last report, but not least, is presented by Alexander Kuchiravi. And the title of the report is Detective Fairy Tale Designing as the Key to Proactive Training of Physics and Mathematics at Primary Schools. You're welcome. Uh, but before this report, uh, I would like to introduce. Thank you. Well, my thank you. Shanovni colleagues. Сьогодні в нашому інституті педагогічної освіти і освіти дорослих імені Івана Зізюна на тому країні більше всього йдеться про педагогіку зраненого серця. Такої педагогіки потребують учні. Сьогодні Звірі, російські окупанти вбили десятки дітей. Сьогодні знищуються школи. Знищено мій рідний Маріуполь. Повністю знищено місто. Знищено завод Азовсталь, на якому я працював свій час після школи. В аспекті педагогіки зраненого серця колись я писав книжки і саме в рідному Донбасі. Це книжки для дітей. На параді краси царіці симетрії, казки дідуся дидактика, Інші. Ось така книжка «Казки дідуся дидактика». Сьогодні я вам розкажу про власну концептуальну схему проєктування дидактичної казки фізико-математичного змісту. Ну, по-перше, за фахом я фізик і математик, закінчив фізико-математичний факультет, скажу, що вершинний смисл краси математики і фізики полягає насамперед їх особистісно розвивальній спрямованості. Друге. Чому педагогіка зраненого серця обирає казку як психотерапевтичний засіб? Тому, що казка дуже близька молодшому школяру. В першу чергу молодшому школяру. Я вже не кажу про дошкільня. Читачі і слухачі дидактичної казки згадують маму яка колись розказувала їм казки або читала. Отже, головне, що казка пов'язана з потребою учня у любові. Третє. Дидактична казка – це ноцій системи цінностей, духовних, загальнолюдських і в моєму в випадку фізико-математичних. Четверте. Проєктування дидактичної фізико-математичної казки фізико-математичної спрямованості – це творчий процес створення педагогічного мікромодуля. Це мікромодуль виконує функцію образного відтворення конкретної ситуації вияву загальних закономірностей явищ природи, особливих, особливостей і властивостей відношень математичних об'єктів. За рахунок чого? А тому, що це робиться на основі надання ним чарівного статусу суб'єктів спілкування, введення у сюжет, 
персонажей, фантастичних персонажей. Я дуже е, полюбляю праці Івана Дмитрійовича Беха. Я кохаюся на цих працях. Скажу, що основне, що я взяв з них, це те, що написано в цих книжках. Це особистісно зорієнтоване виховання і навчання. Всі цінності, об'єктив, які існують об'єктивно, незалежно від нашої свідомості, їх треба намалювати. Намалювати засоби різновидів мистецтва. У нашому випадку різновидів казкового мистецтва. Це проєктування казки, наголошую, це і наука, і мистецтво. Тому, тому хотілося вам презентувати декілька принципів проєктування цієї чарівної науки і мистецтва. Перший принцип, його сформульовано так, це принцип цілісного розкриття фізико-математичного потенціалу народної і авторської казки задля їх творчого перетворення в дидактичні. Другий принцип – принцип творчої свободи у змісті елементів фабули народної авторської казки. Прологу, зав'язки, колізії, інтриги, кульмінації, розв'язки. Їх сюжетних схем, розширення чи вибору нового числа героїв, головній сюжетній розробці теми. І тут свобода. Бачите? Свобода, народ наш сьогодні виборює свободу існування нашої нації. І в проєктуванні казки потрібна свобода. Третій принцип. Принцип послідовної обумовленості відбору наукового фізико-математичного змісту для створення цілісної інноваційної дидактичної казки. Я е, е, не сказав, але це дуже важливо, що е, виділяю два типи казки. Два. Трансформаційно-евристичний тип і цілісно-інноваційний. Трансформаційно Евристичний – це такий тип дидактичної казки, який спирається на вже відому. Вам усім відому з дитинства казки. В вашій компетенції тільки внести інноваційні елементи. Щодо другого типу цілісно-інноваційного, він цілком цілісно-інноваційний. І його героями є фантастичні об'єкти. Тож, вибачаюсь, четвертий принцип. Принцип особистісно розвивальної аквеологічної спрямованості розробки цілісно інноваційної казки на основі елементів, елементів науково, наукових знань в області фізики і математики. Я якраз про це тільки що сказав. Наукові знання відбуваються в змісті фізики і математики. Цей зміст багаторівневий і різноаспектний. Це йдеться не тільки про те, що в цьому змісті повинні сьогодні бути змістові модулі. Тут повинні бути і, і модулі евристичні, евристичні модулі, де система творчих завдань, я маю на увазі школу зараз вищу, або так само ж і школу е, е, середню, першу ланку, е, там повинні бути евристичні модулі, е, стрижням яких є 
творчі завдання і завдання казкового плану на створення відповідних казок. Це повинен бути і такий компонент, як досвід саморегуляції поведінки для молодшого школяра. А якщо брати вищу школу майбутніх педагогів, то це досвід професійної самотворчості, самоосвіти і самовиховання, і педагогічної творчості. Цей досвід гуманного спілкування так само, так само цей комунікативно-розвивальний модуль, модуль повинен бути в системі освіти різних рівнів. Ну, цей принцип особистісно-розвивальної екологічної спрямованості розробки цілісно-інноваційної казки, він якраз і пов'язаний зі змістом, таким, як я сказав, зі змістом нашої освіти. П'ятий принцип, останній, принцип строго підпорядкування фабульного і сюжетного вимислу дидактичної казки усіх типів. Стратегії випереджувального формування вучнів знань основ фізики і математики. Казки всіх типів повинні спиратися на цю стратегію випереджувального навчання. Пам'ятаєте, його започаткувала ще в радянські часи Лисенкова. Взагалі я нічого не казав про теоретичну базу свого дослідження. Скажу, що не тільки Лисенкова багато чого зробила в напрямі створення дидактичних казок. Багато що зроблено і пропом, багато що зроблено Джані Родарі, багато чого зроблено іншими відомими вам каскарями. І вченими йдеться про різні теорії, різні теорії особистісно розвивального і випереджального навчання. Можна багато чого говорити про казку дидактичну, але я б закликав тих, хто може здійснювати волонтерський рух сьогодні. У нас Філіпчук, доктор педагогічних наук, професор, професор Каза розкажуть. Наталія Олександрівна Філіпчук в наші дні в Чернівцях якраз займається волонтерським рухом, який пов'язаний з читанням учням в молодших класах, переселенцям, отаких казок і дидактичних, зокрема. Оцю практику я закликаю продовжити. І це наш, наша буде відповідь на, на наступ російських військ, на їх бажання знищити Україну і український народ повністю цілком, знищити нашу мову, культуру, і щоб і згадки не було. Це єдина можлива відповідь. Дякую за увагу. Thank you. So uh, my my pedagogy is a pedagogy restless heart uh, because a lot of children were killed by Russian today and uh, schools are destroyed. Mariupol and Azov are destroyed too. Uh, I created my own concept of education. First of all, 
Mathematics and physics are on a high peak of education. That's why I implement specially oriented education. Second, fairy tale is close to the primary schools because readers remember their mother and it is connected with the need in love. Four, creativity must be in process. And five, specially oriented education must be implemented in fairy tales. So the principles of fairy tale uh, were written in the chat and uh, uh, our task, my task, uh, is to implement uh, this principle in the anticipatory education. Thank you. We are sincerely grateful to our authors for interesting and thorough reports. We hope for seminal cooperation next year. And uh, Olga Bandarenka, you're welcome. Шановні колеги, прозвучали всі доповіді, які були сьогодні заявлені, і я б хотіла узагальнити, власне, те, що ми сьогодні могли почути. Я дякую абсолютно всім авторам за ваші надзвичайно цікаві доповіді і актуальні доповіді. Сьогодні ми почули відповіді на ті суспільні виклики, які стоять, власне, перед нами. Ми знаємо, що наше довкілля постійно змінюється, і ми сьогодні могли зрозуміти, чому саме так відбувається у нашому оточенні. Надзвичайно цікавими були були доповіді наших іноземних гостей, які говорили про перевернуті класи, в яких ми змушені жити останні роки. Ми всі з вами усвідомлюємо про те, що у нас не лише сьогодні перевернуті класи, можна говорити, що у нас перевернуте життя стало, і ми стикаємося з перевантаженням когнітивним і викладачів, і здобувачів, і батьків. І ми сьогодні могли почути відповіді на ці запитання. Ми розуміємо, що колеги займаються цими запитаннями, цими шукають відповіді на ці запитання, і ми можемо, власне, перечитавши їхні статті, і ще раз знайти для себе щось корисне. Я вам скажу, що я дуже з цікавістю слухала доповіді наших хіміків, і передусім слухала не як науковець, я слухала як мама з тим, щоб прийти і сказати своєму підлітку, якому не цікаво сьогодні вчитися в принципі, тому що вони більше знають, ніж ми, тим паче дуже... Складною є сама по собі хімія. Я готова прийти і сказати, що я тобі щось покажу надзвичайно цікаве. Ти можеш побачити те, що я сьогодні бачила, і я поділюся з тобою цим досвідом. Ми сьогодні почули відповіді на, власне, ті виклики, які стоять перед загалом системою освіти України. Одним із шляхом модернізації – це є стем освіта, і ми бачимо, що робота в Україні продовжується у цьому напрямку. У нас є цілі центри, і ми можемо взяти уже напрацьовані їхні методи, рекомендації, перечитати, намагатися щось взяти для себе. Ми можемо зрозуміти, що ж нарешті варто передбачати і для себе в неформальній освіті, в формальній освіті і так далі. Ну і реалії України такі, що ми сьогодні, я думаю, до педагогіки з раненого серця не лише маємо долучити наше підростаюче покоління, а і покоління дорослих. Також долучиться і переосмислити дидактичне значення казки для того, щоб знайти відповіді для себе, для того, щоб втішити тих, хто поряд, для того, щоб надати допомогу тим, хто сьогодні її потребує. Я хочу подякувати організаторам, які вже третій рік поспіль проводять цю конференцію, і в межах цієї конференції наші семінари. Це надзвичайно титанічна праця, яку не побачиш відразу неозброєним оком, але за цим стоять місяці кропіткої роботи і, зокрема, мудрого керівництва нашого Сергія Олексійовича. Я хочу подякувати Ользі, модератору нашому, яка нам сьогодні допомагала зробити зміст наших доповідей зрозумілим не лише нашій спілкуванні, спільноті, а й нашим іноземним гостям. І я перепрошую, звісно, за технічні труднощі, які виникали, але радію і тішуся з того, що сирени нам дозволили провести цей захід, не перериваючись. Тому дуже сподіваємося на подальшу співпрацю наступного року і дуже сподіваємося, що співпраця для когось закладена сьогодні, вона набуде якихось інших форм реалізації. Договорів про співпрацю, скажімо, спільних онлайн-заходів, спільних конференцій і так далі. Дякую, що сьогодні були з нами і приділили свій дорогоцінний час, тому що могли бути долученими до нашого семінару.
Thank you very much. Дякуємо. Шановні колеги, чи можна слово сказати? По-перше, велике щиро дякую за таку чудово організовану конференцію. Дякую всім, хто прийняв участь. Особливо велика подяка організаторам, Сергію Олексійовичу, особисто вам і вашій чудовій команді. Під час війни це виглядає неймовірно, хочеться себе щепнути, але дякувати Богу, життя продовжується. І, і наш фронт сьогодні пролягає власне, там, де ми є. І те, що ми продовжуємо свою роботу, те, що ми творимо, те, що ми хочемо цього доброго майбутнього з хорошими сценаріями. І наскільки багато креативу, наскільки багато гарних ідей, які ми почули, побачили, якими поділилися наші колеги, це надзвичайно збагачує. І ще раз, було дуже цікаво, було дуже багато цікавих, гарних проєктів, ідей, команд, які презентували свою величезну роботу. Зичимо всім найперше доброго здоров'я, миру нам всім, щоб ми могли на наступну конференцію з вами, ну, не знаю, чи вже наживо зустрітися, але принаймні точно без сирен в мирний час. І через це цінуємо підтримку, допомогу, ось цю участь. І здавалося б те, що неймовірно ви ці люди, які роблять чудеса, неймовірні речі. Велике спасибі, велика подяка. Дуже це цінуємо. Всім, всім вам і родинам, всій Україні нам найшвидшої перемоги, сили духу і розуміти. Ви знаєте, наші студенти зараз по всій Європі, вчора ми спілкувалися зі своїми студентами, дехто в Німеччині, і ну, там якось обстановка, і каже, німці просто в шоці, як ви організовуєте навчання, як все відбувається. Каже, поясніть, чому німці в шоці. Кажуть, вони ні технічно, ні організаційно, ні студенти, ні вчителі, ні учні не готові навіть до формату дистанційного такого широкого навчання онлайн чи змішаного, як проводиться в Україні. Після війни сказали, що приїдуть приймати досвід. Тобто те, що для нас є нормою, наші високі стандарти, наш величезний вже досвід, який ми здобули разом, Ну, напевно, це щось, що ми можемо пишатися тим і розуміти, що, направду, ми кожен з нас багато робить. І разом ми сила. І ще раз надзвичайно рада, рада команда наша Тернопіль передає вітання всім-всім, особливо організаторам Кривий Ріг. Всіх обнімаємо і зичимо миру, спокою і перемоги нам. Дякуємо. Дякуємо вам за відгуки. Дякуємо. Дякуємо всім, наставим миру та спогу. Всього найкращого. До нових зустрічей. До побачення. До побачення. До побачення.